Greetings, Clarifiles. I thought I'd put together a short video today on Labor Day to share something with you I've been very reluctant to share. And uh, what's the source of my reluctance? The source is the fact that, you know, so many people abuse the clarinet by biting, especially with upper jaw pressure biting on the reed, and uh, they cushion their teeth with something because uh, of their using an abusive technique. And I don't want to encourage that in any way. It's the worst thing that you can do for your clarinet playing. And it'll also be very destructive to, 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 to you physically. A TMJ and all kinds of problems here. I found professional clarinet players with all kinds of problems there that's caused them to have to give up playing or make playing very difficult. And it's because they bite. It's because they play the clarinet wrong. And they can be very talented. They can be in orchestras. But they're destroying their ability to play eventually because of overuse and because of wrong use of, of muscles and jaw and all that by biting. So don't bite. And having said that, I will say that there are some times that in, you know, in a player's career when for whatever reasons, one needs some kind of cushioning over the teeth. Myself, I'm a double lip player. I've been playing French embouchure for 40 years now, 45 years. And I've never used any cushioning until uh, in the last few years. And the reason is, is because as I've gotten older, my upper teeth have gotten sharper and sharper. And just, you know, pressing the upper lip uh, against my upper teeth, uh, it makes a mark, even though I'm not biting. Uh, there is that the pressure from the movement of the reed and the mouthpiece. And so I've had to put some kind of cushioning on there. Now, traditionally, what people do when they want some cushioning is they go to, maybe they go to a dentist and they get some kind of special custom thing made just for them. According to the dentist's idea, it may not be the best thing, actually, uh, for uh, the mechanics of the embouchure and all that stuff. And uh, other times, you know, people just uh, use paper and the paper falls apart quickly and so on and so forth. But I want to show you something that's cheap and quick and easy and really cool. It's called parchment paper. Now, what's parchment paper? Well, I find it in the, you know, supermarket like that. Parchment paper is the paper that you would, say, put in a tray that you're going to bake cookies on, and uh, you line the tray with the parchment paper, and and you put the, the, uh, the cookies on there, uh, or the dough on there, put it in the stove, and, and then when they come out, the cookies just fall off the parchment paper, and and you haven't soiled or, or dirtied your pan at all. It's very clean and all that. And uh, so the parchment paper will, is made to stand. It's made with silicone, and it's food grade, so it's not toxic. And it's made, uh, you know, to resist heat and all that. It's a very substantial paper. Now, the beauty of it is, is that when you take it and tear it, you can take it and tear it and shape it so that it fits you know, your, your teeth perfectly. And uh, then when you put it in your mouth, you can wet it and it will respond to the moisture. It will conform to your teeth. But the beauty of it is it doesn't fall apart. It won't fall apart. You can use it for months and months and months and months. Uh, at the shop now where I test a lot of clarinets, I've got a piece of par parchment paper that I shape for my upper lip. And I've been playing using that for like, I don't know, four or five months. And all I do when I come into the shop to start testing is, is that I, you know, spray it with some kind of disinfectant to make sure that it's, it's kind of clean, you know, and I put it in my upper teeth and, and play and it'll never fall apart on you. So this is actually much better than anything that a dentist can come up, up with in terms of prosthetics, because uh, you know exactly how it feels. You know exactly how it should be shaped, and you're in total control of it. You're not having to ask the third party. And then once you get it done, you know, you have two or three pieces of parchment paper folded and shaped just the way you want it. I, I'm not even sure how, how many years you could probably use the same piece of parchment paper because it just does not deteriorate. There's something about the properties of the silicone that just makes it I don't know, uh, indestructible, and especially in, at least in terms of the of a clarinetist use. So, uh, raid your mother's uh, cupboard or your wife's cupboard or whatever, or look in your own cupboard if you young lady clarinet players and 
check out and see if you can dig up some parchment paper. Or, uh, you know, it's going to cost you as much as, oh, I don't know, maybe three or four bucks. And if you get, if you go and buy that for, you know, like two or three bucks or whatever it is, when you buy that, uh, you will be able to use it your entire life and even leave it as an inheritance for your grandchildren, whom they absolutely will play the clarinet. Okay, so that's my message today. Don't bite. That's the big message always. Don't ever bite to control the sound of the clarinet. But the, if you have to use uh, some kind of protection for your teeth so your lips are not cut in certain playing situations, then parchment paper is absolutely the way to go, better than anything else, cheaper than anything else. And, hey, at the very worst, you're going to have, like, a whole bunch of grateful grandchildren. Have a nice Labor Day.